Okay, well, today um, I worked on uh, getting this uh, electrical box installed. Um, this is going to be kind of a, a breaker disconnect between the uh, VFD and the spindle. Um, this line is going to carry three phase power in from the VFD which is going to get mounted uh, somewhere over in this region here. I got that screwdriver to hold the door open there. But uh, anyway so that line comes in uh, these are the three power lines coming in to the breaker and then comes out and uh, goes out through this line which comes up to the cable tray and goes out. Now um, this cable is not ordinary cable. Um, everything is stranded. It's uh, rated for um, uh, continuous flex. It is shielded. Um, and I've taken the shielding wires off of here and connected them to the uh, um, DIN rail on either side um, so that the box is shielded along with everything else. So there should be uh, continuous uh, shielding. I don't know how much that is really needed, but uh, anyway, um, I'm free from EM noise. So the only time that this breaker should really ever um, turn off is during a very abnormal um, VFD failure or something like that. Um, I did put this in because this is, uh, I think it's 14 gauge wire. Um, and uh, I wanted to protect this wire just in the off chance that anything would go wrong. Um, these wires are ground and they're tied together with a good wire nut not going anywhere. Um, so there's shielding that's continuous, ground that's continuous, and three phase, three phase power. So as long as this is on, I really should never have to get into this box during any kind of normal operating conditions. Um, so that can stay closed and uh, probably will stay closed uh, for good. Um, I should mention that's a uh, 10 amp uh, miniature DIN mountable um, breaker in there. So um, under any kind of normal working conditions this thing shouldn't draw any more than I think 8 amps is going to be the max. I think well 8 amps 3 phase that's a 5 horse I think six and a half amps is uh, the three horse uh, spindle. So um, the breaker's there just to protect this wire, just in case. Um, and the other thing I got done today uh, was this plug. Um, this is a uh, five conductor um, XLR connector. Uh, this is the same kind of cable. Um, that uh, uh, this uh, gray cable is. It's rated for continuous flux. I didn't, didn't think I really needed that, but uh, anyway, it's shielded as well. Um, grounded to the outside and it's grounded to that connector in the back. And this cable will be the signal path, the signal carrying cable to the VFD, which will get mounted up there. So, um, things are progressing well. I think I have everything in line um, for the, uh, um, everything is getting prepared so that when I receive that spindle um, and the VFD, I can plug it right in and go. Um, the other thing I did, uh, this is something that every machine should have um, before you start using it. Um, I put a... Uh, Put a ground strap on the machine. Um, I got a uh, some leftover 12 gauge wire, tied it to the uh, um, to the machine, and every part of this machine that's uh, conducting metal, since these bearings are all metal through conducting, um, I can I actually have uh, tested it, and I get uh, 
con conductive path all the way to here and actually uh, right out to here from from there so every part of this machine is grounded um, by the design of it um, every part of it is connected so um, yeah it's coming together um, one thing I noticed is a little bit of uh, corrosion starting to happen on the rail um, I have been doing my best uh, to try and keep these things coated in um, WD-40 but I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, get some table saw wax and uh, wax all that up good um, and that should last a whole lot longer than than anything else um, except for maybe painting it but I can't paint these edges where their bearings ride and that's all that's really important so anyway uh, coming along good I'm happy and satisfied so uh, till next time Bye.